Welcome back my gardening friends. Well, this is uh, plot one. This is the fruit garden, wildflower garden area and where I uh, make all my uh, liquid plant foods. And the uh, stash of uh, compost, I'm slowly uh, getting around to uh, sorting it out. And this is the um, timber from that truck find. Now look at that. Doesn't that look different without all the nails in? Well worth the effort to uh, get uh, it prepared, ready uh, for use uh, around our growing spaces. As we walk in, uh, we've had some volunteer poppies and I've took all the heads off, bar from uh, one on each one, so that all the energy goes into uh, those pods. And as we uh, look around, the, uh, the raspberries now are uh, really uh, getting a good growth spurt on. Further down the line, this is where we left some of the autumn raspberries uh, to, uh, didn't cut them back. We've got a few fruits on them, but they're not really uh, very tasty. And uh, these ones on the end, again, they're very similar. So they may all be autumn fruiting so uh, we'll wait and see at this end one see what they taste like if not i'll be cutting them down um, during the winter on the second row we've got uh, the blackberries it's starting to establish itself now i do interplant with strawberries they don't tend to grow very well along here because they suffer from lack of light but they do act as a good mulch and of course a great haven for the frogs looking for those slugs that will try and eat our strawberries so even though they may not produce a lot it does keep a lot of the weeds down and uh, some of the jobs when we're picking we just pull them out to try and keep uh, on top of them. Now, I've been using the spent compost to mulch uh, these strawberries and I have found that um, I haven't had too much uh, slug damage. Now, I love this variety. There's, I'll show you another picture, another video in a bit, but uh, this seems like a different variety to the rest and it doesn't seem like the birds overly favour those so I will be taking uh, the runners off some of those this time. We're on row three and this is one of the uh, sunflowers uh, from uh, Bill and Val, the Harlequins and that's the first one that's opened up. Just having to watch the light but I think you can see it there. So that's the other side of um, row two and this is uh, row three, the rest of the raspberries. Yeah, so we move now on to the, uh, the rhubarb. Uh, we've been having little bits off it but now we're eating loads of strawberries and uh, what raspberries are coming. You, uh, you tend uh, not to yeah, want to um, have so much, but in the future, these crowns now benefit from uh, all these leaves uh, dying back. So uh, we're, not, uh, we're not hurting nothing, we're only improving the crowns. So these are the last row of uh, raspberries now. There's all sorts of uh, different ones here, but these must be uh, an early variety, mainly the summer. These uh, didn't fruit last year, so they're fruiting now, and uh, the quality is really good. And the autumn gold, the yellow raspberries, have just started to form now. So I'm hoping that uh, maybe I'll be able to take some runners off those and uh, perhaps pop them elsewhere. Must remember not to just yank them out and forget. As you can see there, uh, every day that I pop up, uh, I make sure that I'm not overflowing on the, this is the manure runoff bin, 
We're making good use of it with the uh, celery there. Whether it'll come to anything or not, I'm not sure. But I've got my celery all over the place. So we just have to make sure each day I come. Now look, I know I try and use things to the last minute, but uh, it won't be long before that uh, gives up the ghost. So every time I'm up here, I'll always keep an eye on that. Liquid gold, that is. Um, I think I've got two cherries left. The one that we pointed out before has disappeared. So we had a cherry up here somewhere and I do believe you look in the middle of the screen on the other side there's one there and again in the middle of the screen there's one there so their birds find their way in if they want them as soon as they turn uh, uh, a, a wee better colour. I know um, Somebody said that having the strawberries here would affect uh, the nutrients of the trees and everything else, but bargum, the strawberries have done uh, absolutely uh, marvellous, absolutely marvellous. And uh, somebody did ask me, why do I pick my uh, strawberries while they're still yellow? And uh, there's one here somewhere. Well, I can't actually find it. It looks like they've actually uh, uh, took that one as well and the birds will just uh, keep uh, keep taking them but again this is mulched up and I've uh, not been finding those little small black slugs that we normally get so I'm uh, really pleased with that these are the um, Rocket First Early containers. Now I'm going to start to uh, rejuvenate those with my liquid plant foods. And I've got three potatoes shop bought at home uh, to plant in here for the Christmas potatoes. These are my second earlies, the Marfonias. Now uh, they are flowering and we've got the date. <clears throat> the 22nd three seeds and uh, I've just been taking these uh, tops off for now because I want to put its uh, en energy that's a tough one its energy back into uh, the plant so that we get uh, a few more potatoes while flower garden well, it's just uh, absolutely beautiful. And uh, I do tend uh, to come straight up. I will put the uh, water feature on straight away, which is in the middle of the screen, but it's a little bit noisy. So again, middle of the screen, I've been removing uh, the, the uh, poppy seed heads. And we've got uh, some two sisters gardening there with one of the uh, sunflowers. I apologise for any music you can hear, but uh, in the town centre they're having one of the uh, uh, music in the squares. So you may just get. Uh, the odd little bit of music in the background. All my over, well I say overwintering dahlias, the ones that we overwintered um, in the ground and cover them with those plastic containers to stop the moisture going in, has uh, worked really well. And in the middle there is one of those giant poppies, the seed head there, we'll let that one form fully. Let's just pop round the other side. Uh, the trailing tomatoes are being hidden by uh, all these uh, beautiful flowers. No doubt the bees have enjoyed this sort of warmest day. Uh, it's Saturday, I think it's the 29th of June. But uh, you probably won't see this until uh, July. I've got a few videos uh, already done. But the amount of different colours we've got from the sweet peas uh, 
from the originals is uh, absolutely uh, gorgeous and obviously we don't know what colours we get if we save the seed but all the sweet peas here were grown in this corner there's one there all on its own and all the rest have been replanted by the mice so mice do come in useful Michael Brotherton does keep asking about the uh, strawberry tower and it doesn't matter how much I water I struggle to uh, get uh, the ones at the bottom uh, to have enough uh, water and I'll just uh, show you the uh, strawberry that's hanging out of here um, these are absolutely gorgeous so I don't know whether anybody can just recognize them I suppose I can google it but I don't remember having this variety before um, normally it's just uh, this variety which do get a bit soft and squidgy and don't keep so well but these the centers are absolutely red and gorgeous excuse me Ooh, excuse me oh dear but no, look at the weeds yes I've had problems with um, quite a few weeds I will openly admit that uh, I think I've got every weed in the book growing in here but there again it was the manure that I added there's dock leaves and all sorts Oops, just before I also check the uh, runoff from the uh, built in wormery in the tower, and that goes into there. And as you can see now, I've started to uh, cut some of the uh, planks for my new raised beds that I'm going to be constructing. just for a little experiment as I always do this one here is getting uh, the liquid from the strawberry tower and this one has just been getting uh, my uh, magic liquid mix that we you saw us uh, mix earlier that's a plum I believe that's grew from a stone in the middle of the screen there's some uh, cuttings from a plum and these are uh, cuttings from uh, black and red currants, maybe. Uh, there's a gooseberry. That was a layered one. Some more there that had already got the roots on and they're still going strong. These cuttings are about uh, eight, nine inches long and just placed into the uh, compost bin in a circle. Or should we say flower bucket? Come on. Again, this little strawberry tower uh, plenty on I'm cutting all the runners off bar from those from the others and again even at that height we're struggling to uh, get water down so we'll be uh, looking at that um, over the winter months this is one of the trees I dug up to try and save and we've got a few fruits on it we've uh, cut a few off but if that uh, performs okay I'll end up digging that one into the ground here every time I come up I am uh, tackling the uh, this uh, horrible thing that attacks our uh, asparagus, so the asparagus beetle. I'll keep uh, an eye on that every day I come and uh, it seems you uh, get rid of a few and you get uh, even more. Uh, this is uh, one of the giant singles And the other one is slightly higher. Taking some water, but uh, not too bad at all. The grapevine, each day I come, I try and just uh, bring these round because I want to be able to let the grapes hang as I sit at uh, the seat in front of the wildflower garden. And uh, this one needs uh, moving back over again. 
just slowly train it across without uh, doing any damage to it these are the uh, outdoor tomatoes well the tomatoes that are outside and uh, a little bit lapse on there tying some of them up this one died so I'll put another one in a little bit of successional so hopefully we'll get um, tomatoes throughout the time and again I'll keep an eye on the compost bin runoff which is now my wormery and today being it's been the hottest day I've kept the lid up to let the heat out else the, my, the worms will uh, migrate out and end up drowning or um, just coming out this bin uh, they won't pop show their heads today because uh, there's too much light but there I've added all my uh, uh, ingredients uh, coffee grounds rock dust etc you can see that in a, a previous video and uh, I've put popped uh, the comfrey and my broad beans in here the tops off the broad beans chopped them up with the uh, uh, big uh, shears the uh, tank in the middle that's from uh, the banana now I thought I'd got a problem with this but that doesn't feel like there's moisture in there so the moisture must be getting through and it is going uh, into the container quite slowly but I did have fears that uh, this was getting blocked up but there must be uh, over 5,000 banana skins in there that's got to be worth a reveal isn't it guys what do you think I've uh, got uh, a quantity of uh, fish poo there from uh, the pond at home and uh, we've had loads and loads recently here a, a rain recently here but uh, it won't be long before I need to uh, make sure we've got some liquid on top of that and that's the uh, leaf mold that will go through my uh, trommel uh, uh, towards the uh, autumn which is uh, ready to go here I've uh, done some more beetroot uh, a little bit more lettuce looks like we've had uh, a bird in there and these are the uh, poppies that uh, the uh, seed head um, accidentally fell into uh, the wife's uh, hands and uh, they're growing nicely as you can see there's some of the uh, wormery bin uh, compost bin runoff there this bin is holding uh, everything from uh, the previous 12 months but there's some heat come off that and normally I just mix do my magic mix into um, uh, smaller containers but now this is uh, a mix of all the materials uh, that I actually put in coffee uh, ground liquid etc so I just uh, put a measured jug into there and pop into the watering can with uh, all the comfrey flopped over for some reason I don't know why whether it was ready or over ready but uh, this is the comfrey uh, container it's got this year's comfrey in and this is the the nettle won't disturb it where did Mr Wasp is it a wasp don't know but fly out I'm sure uh, staying in for the night I like to scatter my potatoes all over the allotment uh, these here are the white kidney shaped potatoes that we got from this allotment when we dug them up I'm increasing my stocks uh, William Coleman said when you cut them off at the roots they'll go to seed exactly what happened William so I won't be trying that again with the leeks um, they just went straight to seed these are my uh, sarpos and some tubs have got uh, my uh, own compost and some have got that uh, artificial fertilizer so we'll be doing another reveal later on in the year um, not sure what these are uh, these two are the purple variety that we found uh, on this allotment this is the uh, hashtag potato grown in a pot of turds that's one seed potato it's just showing its face and these are the King Edwards that I found on one of the plots when we were cleaning them up 
yeah i haven't mentioned my giant potato for a while have i guys well it flopped i tried to put it in here so i'll just show you what we actually got from out the bucket so this was in the bucket so it wasn't a, a bad haul of potatoes and uh, my initial thoughts were to uh, have the root there and uh, just make sure there was only one other potato i couldn't find a potato that was misshapen um, but the idea is keep taking the small potatoes off wherever I find them, leaving that one in place. So I'm thinking about doing this for some new potatoes next year and seeing if uh, you can just harvest the potatoes as they grow without disturbing the roots and the uh, horns. So it was a little bit of a failure this year, but Bargum, I've learned loads from it. This is a Lot Mentals um, potato, overwinter potato challenge. Uh, Nick does the sunflower challenges, Nick's uh, allotment diary, and a Lot Mental does the uh, overwinter potato challenge. And this is uh, the compost that uh, I clean up, put the roots and stalks in there, and then uh, I sift through it, take any big roots out, and then put it into one of the storage containers. Lots of fruit on the fruit trees, mainly apples. I think everyone's been suffering uh, with their trees. Uh, I've got to trim this down because I'm only allowed six foot, else I'll get a letter from the committee, even though I'm on the committee. No one gets away with anything. And the pear, there's no pears on that one, but I have one on there. So we've got the, the odd pear, and uh, hopefully, I think this is the plum. There should be uh, one or two plums on there. So we'll see how the apple trees do. If they don't, I'm going to have to make a decision. We'll move into the uh, greenhouse and uh, there is a, you know you cut everything back on the grapevines and uh, it soon comes back and that gives the um, the plant um, the sugar it needs to make the the grapes uh, these are all the dahlias that we saw in the video that we overwintered in the greenhouse grow room please with those that's the potato I replanted and it still doesn't seem to want to grow. I don't know why. And we've got a selection of tomatoes in here. And as you can see, this, they haven't enjoyed that uh, sunshine today. Um, this is the extra one we put in. There's the one that uh, snapped off. And as you can see, that can be brought over to there now and that would be our new tomato plant so never fear if you do damage the tops of the tomatoes the plant will always find a way this is a lovely lovely shaded spot in the harbour and it's a great place uh, to watch the bees and everything else that comes to uh, the allotment Thanks very much for watching uh, my gardening friends. It's surprising uh, the uh, effort uh, I have to put in to get it keeping these two plots uh, in check and uh, the time spent uh, blogging. But it's well worth it because I'm learning absolutely loads from you guys. Happy gardening to you all. Till next time. Off and out.